Okay. Hey, hey, everybody. So I'm trying <laughs> tried this live stream about a hundred times today. Yeah. No, it says no data. I don't know why. It's everything looks <laughs> fine from here. Everything looks fine from here except it says no data. <laughs> Let me look. Let me get stream help. Okay. So we are trying again for this live stream today after um, doing a lot of troubleshooting with the network. And it may just be that I actually can't do anything. I think it's just my physical location. Um, and I was going to do a recorded lesson and mid recording. I just thought this is not, <laughs> this is not it. So live stream lesson for love fool by the cardigans. And if the stream doesn't go that well, I'll just post the recording. Cause I make a recording of every live stream. The recording will be much better than the live stream quality. will. <laughs> let me put up some chords. Um, so you guys can start looking at them cause there's a lot. There's a lot. Don't panic. Don't panic. There's actually also two more that are not listed in these shapes here because I didn't have the shape for them in my chord font. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so in this stream, in the stream, we're going to look at chord shapes. We're going to look at the chord patterns for the verse and the chorus. There's only two parts of this song. They're a bit longish. They're longish parts, um, but there's only two of them. And we're going to look at strum patterns, and we'll pop um, an example of a verse with the lyrics and the chorus with the lyrics and also the outro with the lyrics um, onto the screen later. So this um, song has a lot of chord shapes. There's a lot of strum options. Those are going to be like the meatiest parts of this lesson meaty and hopefully I keep an eye on this connection over here hopefully this uh, live stream will go okay so let's look at ah if you want to get the song arrangement it has all of the information for chord shapes chord variations strum patterns um, chords over the lyrics all of this stuff you can visit um, coffee if you join as a monthly member, you get um, access to the whole library. There's over 450 song arrangements and pretty much everything is explained somewhere on this YouTube channel. If it's not, I will do it on a live stream. That's how it works. And you can also check out the shop there. There's some freebies. If you wanna get just this song arrangement, you can get just this song arrangement in the coffee shop as well. Okay, chord shapes. <laughs> A minor. I'm having a giggle because I put this stream earlier today. So it would be, I don't know, earlier. I'd get an earlier start to my day. And now I'm actually starting it again at the usual time that I do live streams. A minor. D minor 7. G7. Deja vu. C major 7. Okay, C sharp diminished 7. Maybe not as familiar. We're on the first fret here. D minor. E flat diminished seven. So we've got a diminished seven chord shape on the second fret. I like to use my thumb on the G string. This is the controversial way to do it. Uh, and then we got pointer finger, middle, and ring. The traditional standard way to do it would be pointer on the G string, middle on the E string, and then ring and pinky or you can bar it, so you're barring the second fret, and then you've got your middle finger on the C string and your ring finger on the A string. I don't see that doesn't sound. On mine, I can't really um, accomplish that shape, but as an option for you, it might work better on your uke with your fingers. <laughs> um, let's see, E7. So one of the shapes that's not listed here is related to this E7, so we'll go over that now. It's an E13. E13, if you use the start with the E7 shape and then um, put your pinky, lift up this ring finger and put your pinky on the A string, the fourth fret. This is E13. So we're just moving this A string placement up two frets, boom, boom, to the fourth fret. So like the number listing shape for this chord is one, two, zero, four. 
If in the song, if you can't, if you're not comfortable with the E13 shape when it comes up in the song, you can use E7 as a substitute. And again, the same thing with this A, one of the shapes not listed is A major seven. So we'll use this opportunity of talking about the A chord to mention the shape for the A major seven chord. So A major seven is the first fret, the G and the C string, the top two strings. This is my preferred A major seven shape. There's other ways to make A major seven that are in the chord font. I don't like them. I think this is the easiest way to do it. A, A major seven. D major seven bar the second fret and we have a finger on the A string of the fourth fret. B minor seven, to make B minor seven, you just pick up that ring finger from the D major seven shape. So we have um, a bar on the second fret. F sharp minor seven. There is an F sharp mi minor seven shape that's down here with like a bunch of spread out fingers. I don't like it. <laughs> so I use this fifth fret shape. This is the same shape as a D minor seven. If you look back here, the D minor seven, same kind of shape on a different fret. So we're starting on the fifth fret, pointer finger on the E string, middle finger and ring finger on the top two strings here on the sixth fret, and then your pinky on the A string of the seventh fret. Very pretty chord. If you have trouble with the F sharp minor seven, you can substitute F sharp minor. So F sharp minor is the first fret, the C string, the second fret, the G and the E string. It takes some of the shimmer, kind of the pop shimmer, out of the F sharp minor seven shape, but it's a totally fine substitute for F sharp minor seven. And the last chord we have is E plus. Whenever you see a plus sign, that means augmented. So you might also see this kind of chord notated with AUG instead of a plus sign. E AUG, or just a plus sign, is augmented. So E augmented, we have the first fret, the G string, and then the third fret, the A string. You can think of it as like a C chord with this G string on the first fret added. And I tend to use either my pointer finger and my ring finger or my pinky finger, whichever stretch works better for you. Boom, that's all of them. Okay, I'm gonna stop my little video feedback. It seems to be going okay, except for the video is just kind of not very good quality. But I'm not dropping frames like I was earlier, yay. Okay, let's look at, let's look at the verse chords. Uh, oopsie, they moved down. Where did it go? Okay, let me move them up a little bit. All right, so for the verse, this is, Dear, I fear we're facing a problem. We have A minor for four, D minor seven for four. So for that change already, if you notice, like make some connections, the A minor, I'm playing with my middle finger because that's where, that's where it's gonna be for the D minor seven. A minor, D minor seven. Just an idea. Sometimes I still tend to do this and then just go here because of muscle memory. <laughs> G7 for four, C major seven for four. So all them for four, we play it three times, that same pattern. After that, we're playing almost the same pattern again, but we're gonna do this um, walk up, slow walk up to the E7 after we play the C major seven. So this is the same pattern, then we just add something onto it to lead into the chorus. So we have A minor for four, D minor seven for four, G seven for four, C major seven for two, C sharp diminished seven for two. If I watch my fingers, I screw up. <laughs> if I watch my fingers on the video. D minor for two, E flat diminished seven for two and E7 for four. For the E7, sometimes I play the bar position, which is the fourth fret, 
with your middle finger on the A string of the fifth fret. So you might, I might accidentally sort of muscle memory do that. Sometimes it's also an option that you might like to use. It gives it a little bit different sound, especially when you're doing a walk up and there's this ascension of pitches. It's just more of an ascension when you get to this E7 that's a bar shape. It's a little bit higher um, inversion than this one. So you might like how it sounds better too. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Allie. Thank you for shouting out my Hello Kitty tape. Yes, yes. I don't have the right. Um, this microphone stand is new and it's supposed to be for like all different devices. Like you can put your phone on it, but it didn't come with a microphone clip. I think I ordered two of them and I think the other one did. And then I brought the wrong one. <laughs> and the only tape that they had at the 7 Eleven here is like character tape. Like all of them had just patterns on them. I'm like, all right, we're gonna be Hello Kitty. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cute. It's working, <laughs> it's working. I'm gonna have to, um, I gotta look around for the right kind of clip to go in here or not maybe. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see going forward. <laughs> okay, what was I talking about? Um, the verse chord pattern. Okay, so let's play it. Let's play it with a down strum slowly. One, two. Hi, Layla. Thank you so much. This is why I like live streaming because I get to like say hi to people <laughs> and hang out a little bit. So I'm glad that this one seems to be working out okay. The one I started two hours ago <laughs> was not good. All right, let's see. One, two. Three, wait, slow. One, two, three, four. A minor. D minor seven. This is the slow, sad version. G seven. C major seven. Do it again. A minor. D minor seven. G seven. C major seven and again A minor D minor seven G seven C major seven okay now we're on the second line A minor D minor seven I've done this so many times today okay <laughs> C sharp flat E7 I went for the top one love me love me so that that's the verse and then we'll look at the chord pattern for the chorus um mom, 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 yeah so having a little finger finger break here um hi Brad <laughs> And this is like the third time I've tried this live stream today, and I'm just happy to see there's a lot of people popping in to say hello. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> Actually thought the earlier time would be better for more people, and now I'm getting more people on this one. Because this is kind of the usual time. Um, so little like finger break from all these big chord shapes. And just like some anecdotes about the um, how this song came to be. The Cardigans are a Swedish band. They're more of like a rock band than a pop band. And they kind of accidentally, this song just sort of fell into their laps. I mean, like spiritually, artistically, however you want to say it. They wrote it. But um, they, when they talk about making this song, they were like, this song is really out of character for us. Um, but, you know, I wrote the lyrics. The lead singer wrote the lyrics. And then... They thought it was going to be kind of the slower and like more sad song. And it is actually really a sad song if you play it slow. Like even just playing those verse lyrics at a slower pace to practice, it sounds really kind of melancholy. But the drummer started playing 
this disco beat and then it stuck and it just, you know, boom, they made this accidental pop hit. And I think they were really stunned and kind of shocked at the public reception of it. (laughs) And while they're like happy to have a hit song at the same time, they're like, but this isn't really how we sound. (laughs) This song is super out of character for our band. Um, But now it's a major, major, major pop hit. And if you read a lot of like the critical, um, like the critiques of it, all of the critics are talking about what a like perfect pop song this is. They wouldn't change a thing. You know, it has all the elements of just pop music. It was a massive hit at the time. And that's pop music, everybody. It really is. It's a great pop song. I also, yes, this is from Romeo and Juliet. I think of the Baz Luhrmann Romeo and Juliet when I hear this song. I actually saw the Cardigans at my first concert ever. It was like, I think it was 96. Like 96, 97, 98. I can't remember. I saw Beck on the Odelay tour and the Cardigans opened for him. So I saw them play this song. I don't really remember (laughs) their opening set. I just remember um, what Beck did because it was so amazing. And it was my first concert. So really my first concert ever, technically, was the Cardigans <laughs> doing this song when it was really popular. <laughs> Very mid-90s. Um, yeah. she. I think in the little anecdotes about how this song was made, she also, the lead singer mentioned, I can't remember her name right now, mentioned, you know, like, said something like, the songs that are really popular just happen like that. And it's so true. They just kind of like pour out of you. Um, in my experience too, if, if something like something that happens really easily, but you can't, you never get to decide when those songs come to you. (laughs) So it was just like a special moment in time that this song found its way to, um, you know, recorded music. Okay. So let's talk about the chorus. We've got, um, We've got faster changes in the beginning, which you might find surprising. I find surprising whenever I play it. So just heads up on that. We're going to play A for two, D major seven for two, B minor seven for two, E13 for two. So if you don't want to play the E13, you can play E7. And we do that four times. So we got faster changes, kind of big chord shapes, but you get to like settle into that pattern for a little while. And then we have F sharp minor seven for four, B minor seven for four, E13 for four, and A A major seven for four. Then we're back to the pattern from the beginning, the same one, we do it twice. And then we got a different ending. A for two, D minor for two, E augmented for four. And then we hit the A minor for a couple of bars. This is kind of an interlude between the chorus and the verse, just the A minor. So we're playing A minor for eight at the end. And this is the love me, love me, that section. So if we strum down, um, if we strum down, yeah, strum it, just strum it down. <laughs> one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Any slow down, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. A, D, B, E13, A, D, B, E13, do it again, D, B, E13, A, or E7, D, B, now we go to the second line, F sharp minor 7, B minor 7, back to the regular pattern. Love me, love me, say that you love me. Wasn't this song in Romeo and Juliet? Wait, oh wait, the last line, A, D minor, A, or E plus, and hold it, A minor. Did 
different when they use this song in the movie. My recollection of it is that like it was actually playing on the radio and they were kind of singing along to it. Is that which is kind of like how how it went for this song when it actually released in the real world. <laughs> it's like it was just on the radio all the time. Um, that's kind of my memory of it. Maybe it was from another movie or show. I don't know. What was I going to say? Oh, I was going to put in the chat in case. In case you weren't here for when I talked about E13, these are the shapes for them. E13 and A major 7. Um, and then if you don't want to use E13, you can use E7. And if you don't want to play A major 7, you can play A. That was kind of how it went. Let's see. Okay, we're going to look at strumming. So this song, if you've heard me talk about disco and dance songs before on the channel, disco and dance songs tend to sit kind of in kind of like in a mid-tempo area. They're not they're not super fast, they're not super slow. And because of like the, just the nature of their rhythm, it's a very straight rhythm, one and two and three and four and but it's not super fast. It makes it a little bit difficult to play them with a strum like the island strum. It's a little difficult to keep really on that straight beat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. But at the same time, if you play with um, a subdivided beat strum, I'm trying to move these around so you can see them. Maybe I'll close the chord pattern. <laughs> okay. So I put one subdivided beat strum pattern down here. If you're playing in a rhythm that's one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, it's a bit fast. So you kind of have to choose like which place you're more comfortable in, or you play with a subdivided beat and you slow down the tempo a little bit. The tendency is either going to be play with a divided beat, one and two and three and four in, like the island strum, which is the first one here, down chunk up, up chunk up. The tendency, if you're playing that, is to speed up. You will probably end up speeding up subconsciously. If you play with a subdivided beat rhythm, one and a two and a three and a four and a, the tendency is to slow down, just to make it like easier to play that rhythm. So you kind of you just kind of choose what you're more comfortable with, but for like classic disco rhythm, these are gonna be um, I don't know it it just works a little bit better with a straight rhythm. If you listen to the recording, you'll hear like a um, high I think it's hi hat. That's that subdivided beat. So while the major parts of the drum beat, boom, tss, boom, tss, boom, tss, boom, tss, or whatever, is doing a subdivided thing, you've got this underlying subdivided beat. Ticky, 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 ticky. But it's pretty fast. <laughs> it's pretty fast to do subdivided beat strums. But they're all here for you. So we can either play down chunk up, up chunk up. This is probably what I'll do to demonstrate today. I just wanted to show you like the nature of these disco and dance songs, like how different rhythms fit into them. They kind of sit right in the middle. It makes it difficult to play them on a st strummed instrument sometimes. Um, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use for demonstrating these things, like the first line of the verse chords. Let me move it back over here. Thank you, Nicole. Okay. Let me catch a breath. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna use this first line of chords to demonstrate these. So the first one, island, chunky island strum, down, chunk up, up, chunk up, down, chunk up, up, chunk up, down, chunk up, up, chunk up, A minor, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. So I'm really leaning into that chunk, like landing on the chunk pretty hard to make this drum really rhythmic. Um, let me skip over the second one just for a second. 
So I can talk about the third one because it's related to the first one. So this is down, chunk up, down, chunk up. This is actually just the first half of Island's drum. Down, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up. One, two, three, four. Down, chunk up, 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 down, chunk up. And it really works best when you have faster chord changes, like this last line of the verse. When you have a chord for each down chunk up, that's when this strum works the best. I would recommend this for when you have faster changes, not for the longer bars like this. And then what you can do also is take the first one and then play the third one after it. Down, chunk up, up, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up, up, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up. Down, chunk up, up, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up, A minor. Down, chunk up, D minor, G7. Down, chunk up, down, chunk up. It's kind of hard to follow for me. It's hard to follow strum patterns. <laughs> but I want you to have all the options. Um, and then I'm still going to talk about the fourth one before talking about the second one. The fourth one is, as you can see, the island strum, down, chunk up, up, chunk up. And then we repeat that last up, chunk up. Down, chunk up, up, chunk up, up, chunk up, up, chunk up. You're repeating that little last half of it two more times. So it's almost like what we just did. We're taking the island strum, taking some part of it, and just repeating it. And this is stuff that like, I notate it because when I go to arrange these songs and I'm like playing just the chords, I tend to do these things naturally, like just like in the natural flow of things. So I wanna show you the notation of it in case you wanna try it because it will um, like crack open your strumming a little bit more. If you know that you can do these things, you might eventually do them kind of subconsciously. What was I saying? Okay, <laughs> so this one, this one. One, down, chunk up, up, chunk up, up, chunk up, up, chunk up, down, chunk up, up, chunk up, <laughs> chunk up on the A minor, <laughs> down, chunk up, up, chunk up, up, chunk up, up, chunk up, down, chunk up, up, chunk up, up, chunk up, up, chunk up, down, chunk up, chunk up. Kind of tricky again it's easier for me to do it when I do it like in the flow of things than when I try to remember to follow the pattern um, the next one here with this little pluck did I mean that as pluck I guess I did oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you can either pluck it or you can strum down this is meant to mimic um, kind of the opening guitar in the beginning bum bum Wait, how's it go? One, and two, and three, and four, and one. Uh. It's kind of meant to mimic um, some of the guitar in the original. I find this really difficult to keep up with when I'm playing and singing, but it would be cute like in an interlude or in the intro. And if we're just plucking it, this P is a pluck strum. You pluck all four strings at once. getting lost in it so we're plucking on the one and the two and then we've got this offbeat thing that happens one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and they're all coming on the ands these last four plucks and this one is in parentheses because it's kind of optional it might make it easier sometimes for you to leave that one out and also because if we're changing chords playing this one, for example, with the A minor and the D minor seven, the A minor will come on the one and two, 
and the we already change for this one that comes on the and of four. So it makes the D minor seven come just a tad early. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and whoops C and one and two and three and four and let me close the other one so you can see my hand better. And maybe in these movies up here. Okay. Yeah. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and Four and G C one and two and three and four and 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 it's really hard for me to do pluck strums on this thing because it has more strings. But if you do it with just a down strum, down, 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 it's a little bit easier. Down, 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 down. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So it sounds really cool, but it's really hard. It's really hard to play and sing with that one at the same time. Um. It just sounds cool, so I want y'all to have it. <laughs> okay. And real quick, the one subdivided beat strum that I put on here is basic strum two. If you want more information about subdivided beat rhythms and about strum patterns, there's um, two lessons on the channel that I recommend. I can't remember if I linked them already in the caption, but I'll do it after the live stream's finished, I'll go edit the caption for it. One is about subdivided beat rhythms, and one is about, one is a strum pattern index. It has 16 strum patterns. There's a free PDF that comes with it. And if you're a member, if you're a member and you have library access, there's actually an ongoing strum pattern index. So every time I do a new one, I update that strum pattern index. I think there's like over 30 now, <laughs> 30 strum patterns. Some of them, it maybe maybe this one is new on there. I can't remember if I updated it with the Love Fool ones yet, but yeah, tons of strum pattern and rhythm information around. So this one is down, wait, <laughs> I have to get into it. <laughs> down, chunk, up, up, 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 down, chunk, up. But up to speed, it's going to be more like down chunk, up a 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 down chunk. Dear, I feel a face and a problem, and I'm even doing it bit slower than the original so you can see how it's like a really fast strum if you choose to use this but it's a lot more rhythmic um a lot of these up strums are just flicks not really a full up strum in my experience usually up strums are not full up strums <laughs> just give you some tips on that if you choose to use it today i'm going to use mostly divided beat like the chunky island strum oh my god so much strum stuff Okay, so I think what we're going to do is pop some lyrics on the screen. And if you're hanging out and having a good time, if you could please click the like button for me, that would be awesome. And take a little water break. Okay. Let's remember where we have weird changes. So they are actually notated uh, pretty well. This one we got at the end of the verse here, we've got some sl uh, faster chord changes. But most of the time it's kind of even.
Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna use Chunky. Island Strum, and the intro for this song, I think I mentioned it before. I don't know, I've done this stream like three times today. <laughs> I can't remember what I've said on this one. A minor is your intro. So we're gonna just gather around the A minor here and play that for some bars, just to get the rhythm going. Here we go. Here we go. Dear, I feel we're facing a problem. You love me no longer, I know. And maybe there is nothing that I can do to make you do. Mama tells me I shouldn't bother that I ought to stick to another man. And that surely deserves me I think you do I pray and I beg I totally forgot to sing this part Because I was so I was so concentrating on the chord changes <laughs> um, I'm going to play the last two lines in just a second So this strum When I get to these faster chord changes I'm doing the down, chunk up, down, chunk up, down Chunk up, down, chunk up so from this A minor, that's right after Stick to Another Man. And I go from Mama Tells Me, it's easier. From Mama Tells Me. One, two, three, four. Mama tells me I should bother that I ought to stick to another man. Man, I surely deserves me, but I think it does. Okay, and the chorus with the lyrics. Kaboom! The chorus with the lyrics, and we'll talk about the outro. Talk about the outro. It's pretty much a chorus, but just a little bit different. Um, so we're remembering that for these first four lines, these are all two each. A, two, D major, seven. The chord changes are happening faster, right? So I'm probably going to be doing that down chunk up, down chunk up thing again. When we get to this line, we're slowing down the chord changes. It also kind of slows down like the mood of the song at that point. It's like she's taking a chill pill for a second and then she's stressing out again. <laughs> Let me reiterate, love me, damn it. <laughs> and then the last line, these also have two beats. When you get to the A, uh, the A augmented, the E augmented, this one is for four, and you can just strum it and hold it. Anything, anything by you. Um, yeah, actually, all three of those, the A, the D minor, and the E augmented. Just strum it down. I can't care about anything by you. On the A minor, we bring the beat back just to let you know what's coming up a little checky check okay cool 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 which way do i move over so you can see my hand <laughs> and move this over to it okay <laughs> one two three four okay down chunk up wait down chunk up down chunk up down chunk up down chunk up down, chunk up, ready on the A. Love me, love me, say that you love me. Fool me, fool me, go on and fool me. Love me, love me, tell that you love me. Leave me, leave me, say that you need me. So I cry. I went way too fast, yes. And I beg for you to. I think that's actually up to tempo by the time we got to the end, but I started way too fast. So I'm going to do it again <laughs> and try to go a lot slower. <laughs> Let me see. 
down, chunk up, down, chunk up. Because this is the practice, right? Down, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up. One, two, three, four. A, D. <laughs> I'm supposed to sing it too. I'm already going too fast. Down, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up, down, chunk up. Love me, love me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> For real this time. One, two, three, four. Love me, love me. Say that you love me. Fool me, fool me. Go. To a verse. Verse starts with A minor. So I would say probably the trickiest change, the trickiest change is from that E13 to the F sharp minor seven. And I'm like, there's another F sharp minor seven, but it's really far up the neck, so it may not work for everybody. D sharp. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just adding this in real time. This was not an idea I had earlier, but now I've had so much trouble moving to that F sharp minor seven fast. So here's another workaround. You can bar, you can bar the ninth fret. This is also an F sharp minor seven. And since it's just a plain bar, it may be easier to get to than the F sharp minor seven shape. Where does that come from? Wait. I'm going from here. Leave me. One, two, three to that ninth fret. Just another option for F sharp minor. It's kind of the ickiest thing about this song. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, them's all the parts. Boom. So now, oh, the outro. Them's not all the parts. Outro is just the first four chords from the chorus. The pattern that we repeat a lot in the chorus a d major 7 b minor 7 e 13 and then it's got a spoken little bit instead of singing and we end on that same um, line that comes at the end of the chorus so i will do this slowly with the island strum and with down chunk up down chunk up one two three four a d b Say that you love me. A, D, go on and fool me. I know that you need me. I can't care about anything but you. The end. That's how they end it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play the whole thing. Lord help me. We're going to try to do it kind of slow. Let's do it. I'm going to do it slowly one time. Um, it looks like maybe we got some new people in here. Hello, if you just arrived. We are mid-lesson for Love Fooled by the Cardigans. We're going to do, let's do a dress rehearsal of the whole thing. 
And then actually I'll put on like a kind of disco beat that's close to the tempo of the original, but maybe still a little bit slower. And play the whole thing again with a beat. And I'm just opening the arrangement on my iPad. Yeah, if you're just joining us, um, help the stream out, help the channel out by clicking the like button. That would be cool. And if you missed the lesson, you can always go back and watch from the beginning. Um, let's see. And I will put up the chords. I'll put the verse and the chorus chords back up. Um, if you want to try to play along a little bit with me, I'll do like this. Or if you're a member, you got it over in the library, then you can just follow the PDF. Let's see, I sent it to my iPad earlier. Hello, the world's oldest iPad. Guys, this iPad's almost 10 years old. Which just goes to show you how Apple has changed all of its products so that they break sooner <laughs> because it still works. This one still works. Cannot, the same cannot be said for um, my phones, my different iPhones that I've had. Okay, I thought I sent this to my iPad earlier. I did not go. Maybe I'll send it. Take a little break. Okay, awesome. And also gonna Google, I meant to Google, what's the speed of this song? Level BPM. Ba -bum. What's the heartbeat of this song? How fast is its heartbeat? 112, yeah, that's pretty quick. So we'll do it. We're not going to do it right now, but later we'll do it about like 108 or 110. Just slow it down a little bit. Okay, here we go. Right now it's just dress rehearsal. It's dress rehearsal, so we'll keep it fairly slow. Mm -hmm. That actually sounds like the actual beat a little bit slower okay we're gathering around the a minor ready ready here we go in the verse dear i fear we're facing a problem you love me no longer i know and maybe there is nothing for a second here again. This is why it's a dress rehearsal. I'm coming back over to the live stream thing. Okay, we're back on the verse. Here we go, verse two. Lately I have desperately pondered Spent my nights awake and I wonder What I could have done in another way To make you stay I don't 
care if you really care as long as you don't go. I cry and I pray and I beg. Love me, love me, say that you love me, fool me, fool me, go on and fool me. Love me, love me, tell me that you love me, leave me, leave me, say that. First line of the chorus for the outro. Say that you love me. Go on and fool me. I know that you need me. I can't care about anything but you. It's so hard. Shoo! Man, you don't get a break. <laughs> Vocally, you do not get a break. And the way it's recorded, it's like herself as her backup singers doing a lot of the singing. So when you do it by yourself, it's like, man, where do I breathe in this motherfucker? <laughs> nowhere. You breathe nowhere, okay? <laughs> but you're probably going to have to drop in the chorus. You probably have to drop some of the lyrics, basically, just to give yourself a break. And honestly, she probably did it when they played this live. You know, it's one of those moments where you go like, yeah, sing it with me. And you're like, love me, love me. And you go like this to the audience. Get the audience to do your job. <laughs> Recorded music versus live music. Almost any time a lead singer is like, let me hear you. And goes like this. It's because they need a break. <laughs> if they did need a break, they would sing it too. Okay, we're going to put on a disco beat, and then that's going to be it. And it seems like it seems like this worked out today. <laughs> this live stream finally worked out. Um, I don't know. Go watch the playback. It may be too grainy, and I have to upload the playback anyway. Thank you, Brad. It is, it, is it only the second one? Wait a minute. Yeah, because we did... Um, we did, uh, what's that song? Uh, Young Hearts Run Free. Um, I also, I had the same thought this week. I'm like, I got to watch that movie again. But you know what? When I, I tried to watch it, oh, talk show host. Yes. So there's three. Because actually, there's three songs from this soundtrack. And this is one that I've thought like, oh, we should just do a live, like a whole week of, I should do like a soundtrack every week kind of thing. Like famous soundtracks. Because we did Pulp Fiction. That's the one like live stream. That's the one live stream um, that was just for a movie soundtrack. But now we've got a few from this. There's Talk Show Host. That's in the library. It's not on the channel. Um, and then Young Hearts Run, Run Free. And now this one. There's that famous Desiree song. I Sorry, I'm getting really distracted because there's actually bees swarming outside my window right now. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bee swarm happening which is really cool but they those bees or maybe it's a different hive they relocated like a week ago because I saw the blob the bee blob on the tree um, and then it was gone the next day so I figured they found a new hive but it looks like one of the hives is moving again <laughs> I'm living like on a the little house I'm renting is on kind of a fruit orchard and they have a bunch of beehives so it may just be another beehive. Um, yes, Romeo and Juliet. Songs from Romeo and Juliet on In the Library talk show host. This one. Young Hearts Run Free, which is like, I love playing that song. It's so much fun. Okay, we're putting a beat on. 
It may also add a little, like, let's maybe a little chorus. Chorus would be good for this poppy sound. And let's see what this beat sounds like. So this is actually 112. This is the speed of the original. Actually, let's keep, yeah, that's not too bad. It's, it almost feels slow to me, which is the point that I was kind of making. The point I was kind of making about um, the strum rhythms of this. If you use island strum, you'll tend to speed up. If you use a subdivided beat strum, it's difficult to keep up with. It's a lot faster rhythm with that kind of rhythm. So let me show you the difference between the two, actually. And the bees are done swarming. I don't see them anymore. Okay. Let me see. See, this is uh, this is the island's drum. And it's kind of like spread out like the in between the space in between like the down the chunk and the up they're kind of spread out and it makes it hard to keep like really on rhythm when it's a straight rhythm like this a subdivided beat strum will sound like this two three four it's pretty fast two three four one and a two and a two e and a one e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three and a four e. <laughs> so you can kind of see the difference. It's the same speed of song, but using like a rhythm that's divided up more makes it harder to keep up with that rhythm as opposed to using a beat that's not divided as much, one and two and three and four and, the tendency is to speed up. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do with an island drum. Yeah, let's do it. Put my chorus back on. We can sound really poppy. Here's that bum bum two and three and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. It's that um, pluck strum that I showed earlier. If I do it with the, the verse chords, D. Getting to change earlier. Wait. D, 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 C, 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 A, A. This is also a nice intro. G, D, C, 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 A minor. A minor. A minor.
super cool with the chorus sound <laughs> so you can see like I was especially when I got to verse two I was like working hard not to speed up I wanted to speed up and I'm like nope listen to the effing beat because <laughs> it's the that it's so hard to like maintain that really straight beat because it's not super fast and we don't have room for error because there's no swing when you have a when you have a down down up up down up like in folk or country music or even like reggae it's not divided directly in half one and two and three and four and when you have a swing, one and two and three and four, you have a little bit more room for error with the beat division. It makes it easier to play, which makes disco kind of hard to play, even though it's really simple. Any drummer, like ask any drummer, the, probably the most boring thing to play is disco. Because <laughs> um, you're just going bum, tss, bum, tss, bum, tss, and it's super boring for them. <laughs> Okay, I think we finally worked it out here. Um, yeah, let me see what the quality is for the video. Might just post a playback. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, if you made it this time around, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to click like before you leave. And I will see you later this week with more disco. Billie Jean, Michael Jackson, disco music. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a great day. See you later.